What's going on everybody? I am Real Estate Randy and for those y'all who are making your first time coming to my YouTube channel, please take a second to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and then if you wait a couple of seconds or so and then hit that like button, it helps with the algorithm to get this information out to as many future homeowners and uh, current homeowners uh, as possible. So today what I'm going to be talking about as a buyer, these are the four questions that you have to ask your realtor or the seller, okay? If that sounds interesting to you, like I said, man, like the video, let's get into it. So the number one question that you should ask is the home in a homeowners association. For those of y'all who are not familiar with homeowner associations, they're basically a, a group of homeowners that give you rules, okay? The things you can and can't do in that neighborhood. It's a great thing and it's a bad thing, okay? So the positives about homeowner uh, association is the fact that it's gonna help you maintain the value of your home and your neighboring homes are not going to affect your bottom line we're opposed to in communities when there's no homeowner association and you live next door to the person who has the couch on the lawn and the swim swing set with the baby pool in the front yard and the, and then like the the cars with the the motors missing and on jack stands and then like the tarps oh, you you get the idea it keeps that from being your neighbor. Therefore, when you go to resale, there is a lot of value in that. I, for one, am a fan of a, a homeowner association when you are purchasing your first or your second home. Now your forever home might be a little bit different. You might not want that homeowner association. So that is a very important question that you should ask um, because you wanna know what the rules and regulations are. You wanna get the homeowner's bylaws in your hands so you can look through it to make sure it's something that you can actually um, abide by because you can't paint your house the color you want sometimes there they has to be approved they'll they'll get you for not cutting your grass and if it's too high they'll give you a ticket uh i i got that once you know and they don't care about your story they didn't care the fact that you know i was working the oil fields and i'm working 14 15 16 hour days and i'm working 10 days straight and i only get three days off they didn't give it they didn't care at all about that okay Sorry, sorry, but but that's a negative. That that's a negative. Okay, so that's that's the number one question that you should definitely ask. The second question that you should ask is how old is this roof? Okay, because here's the thing: you want to know exactly how much life is left in that roof. Okay, you don't want to get into the home and then come to find out a year from now you have to purchase a roof. That is an expense that you are not. Uh, quite prepared to make most likely right so you want to know how old the roof is and if you find out that the roof is old as hell you might want to ask the seller uh to get that repaired and fixed or something before you move forward in the transaction the good thing is right now it's 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 starting to flip into a buyer's market that you could make that request so make sure you ask your realtor or ask the seller if you're purchasing without a realtor which i don't understand why you would do that because of the fact that you know as a buyer the realtor is free to you and you might as well have that perfect i'm sorry i'm going off topic I'm, I'm doing it again have your realtor ask the seller's agent or the seller um how the roof is because you want to know it's vital information is a very important question to ask okay question number three this is the third thing that you should ask what is coming with this house okay because sometimes they sell the home and it's just bare bones and it's like nothing right but you want to know because the refrigerator is not required to come with the home okay um so you want to ask hey are y'all selling it with the fridge or without the fridge and that makes it a possibility for you to even ask for it if they're not washer and dryer does not come with the home sometimes you'll see uh mounts for tvs and Technically, because it's attached to the wall, it should stay, but if they remove it and put that in writing, they don't have to give you that. You wanna know upfront before you make your offer, what exactly is included? Because there might be things that you want, okay? So that's the third question that you need to be asking. What is included in this home sale? 
The fourth question you should ask is when is the last time these appliances have been updated? Okay, because this is another expense that you don't want to have to take on immediately as you move in the home, right? Or at least you want to be prepared just in case. You want to know, hey, how old is this dishwasher? Is it 15 years old? If it's 15 years old, you know it's going to be time soon for you to buy a new dishwasher. Same thing with the microwave. And if you're purchasing the fridge with the home or the, the washers and dryer, you want to know exactly how old these appliances are so that way you can be prepared. I'm not saying to be like, hey, oh, they're too old, buy me new appliances. That's not what I'm saying. It's that way that you can be prepared for, hey, this might be a future expense that's going to come a lot quicker than I originally anticipated. Here is another thing that I want to make sure as a buyer that you are asking your uh, realtor, if you're working with a realtor, if not, you're asking the seller's agent or the seller themselves. You make sure, and this is just the bonus one, you make sure that you get a copy of that seller's disclosure, okay? You want that seller's disclosure because in that disclosure, the uh, seller is legally obligated to let you know if there's anything that they know is wrong with that home. You want to read over that. Make sure that you're actually looking at this seller's disclosure. I know a lot of clients in the past would just get it and be like, all right, cool, and just move on. I mean, they trust my judgment, which I appreciate, but I still want uh, you as a homeowner, future homeowner, to be responsible and read over that seller's disclosure to make sure there's nothing in there that might bother you. Because here's the thing. For me, as being in this business for a while, there are certain things in that might not be a concern to me because it's, it's a normal wear and tear as far as um, from my experience and knowledge of this business. But for you, it might not be the same thing. So you need to read over it. And if you have any issues or anything like that, you want to talk to your agent about it. You want to be like, hey, I've noticed this. Maybe this is something I want to get addressed. And then they can talk to you and be like, hey, from my experience, da 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 Or, yes, you're right. We should go ahead and address this. I hope you like those four questions that you should ask with the bonus one of reading over your seller's disclosure. If you appreciate content like this, please, like I said at the beginning of the video, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on my social medias. I'm posting at a more regular rate now than I was before. I've made a promise for 2023 to devote myself to content, providing information and knowledge to future homeowners and also homeowners who are potentially thinking of selling their home. And as always, I hope you have a great day and stay safe.